part of the stream. Uh, waiting for the um, platforms to get with me. There we go. We are good on Twitch and still waiting for YouTube. Uh, you know how like most people have like a YouTube intro? I feel like my YouTube intro is like, well, still waiting for Twitch, still waiting for YouTube. Um, okay, excellent. So we are good on both platforms and it sounds like the audio is good. Good morning. Uh, well, it's morning for me. Good day. Although I guess it could be night for you. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, we are, we've been working on uh, this project together on the live coding for quite a while together now, and we're starting a new approach. Um, so we have these notes on the forum Slackbot project, if you want to go back and sort of like learn about all the things that we talked about and all the, uh, the ways that we thought about approaching this problem. And um, the big idea is that right now, every morning, I read all of the forum posts on Kaggle that aren't specifically on competitions because different DAs do that. Uh, and it's not super duper sustainable in terms of the amount of time that it takes. Um, so the amount of forum posts that we have on the site are growing exponentially. Um, and especially when there's some sort of big event or people are talking about something in particular, um, I can wake up and have like 300 emails, which is maybe too many. <laughs> um, hello, Alan. So I want to start automating that part of my job. Uh, by summarizing forum posts and topics and being like, hey, people are talking about this new thing. It's probably important. Make sure you pass that on to various other people. Uh, hello, 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 hello. <laughs> Ryan says 99 plus notifications. Oof, is that, uh, it'll just make them go away. There we go. Um, I, I usually all give all my notifications through email, so I just never check the one on Kaggle. Uh, but yes, hello, 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 welcome. So uh, the first part of this project is that I want a way to summarize all of the information, all of the different forum posts. And specifically, I want a way to cluster similar forum posts together. So I want to know if, you know, um, I'm imagining that I'm probably gonna have a cluster that's like bugs. And in that cluster, I'm gonna have like a specific bug that people are reporting, or maybe something that people are talking about that's not actually a bug. Um, or something like that, but a way to really easily like send it to the my engineering colleagues and be like, hey, a lot of people are talking about that. It's important. How can we uh, address it more quickly? So uh, what we tried previously was this um, Yake and Brown clustering pipeline. So Yake is a keyword extraction algorithm and Brown clustering is a statistically based lexical clustering algorithm. Uh, and we got really good results with the keyword extraction. So Yake is unsupervised, which is really nice. And I think actually one of the package authors was in the chat last time. So you can go back and look at the, the last live coding if you're interested. Uh, and we had really good example, uh, really good results with the keyword extraction and kind of useless ex <laughs> results with the clusters. Um, so here are some examples of our clusters um, based on the keyword extractions. And these are lexical clusters. So these are words that are more likely to occur together than they are in isolation. So data set find problem, that's a cluster. For HTTPS, that's a cluster. Make with, that's a cluster. Um, so I can kind of get how these might be used together more often than other words, but in terms of um, really uh, interpretable large clusters I can use for um, summarizing the forums, not, not the best. So we are trying something different. Uh, hello, hello, hello. A lot of people saying hi. Oh, the oh, I have a, I know sometimes people ask about my mugs. This mug says it's really shiny over there. Uh, Python, it's good for you. Uh, it was a thank you gift for speaking at Pi Cascades, which is a Python conference. Okay, so that's where we are right now. Um, the next thing that I wanna try is uh, instead of keyword extraction, or maybe we can add keyword extraction a little bit later, uh, I wanna try um, embeddings. So these are sort of our notes while we were we were scoping out this project. 
Uh, and here we have, so we're working on this step right here. Um, I want to take words in and then get some sort of matrix out so that I can use methods that are more numerical and don't rely on things like statistical co-occurrence like Brown clustering does. Um, so I'm going to do this using embeddings. And we've talked about embeddings a couple of times on the channel. Um, in the reading group, we read one of the chapters of... Oh, look, 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 look. Uh, one of the chapters of speech and language processing. Um, although we read the most recent edition, which has a big chapter on neural methods that is not in the edition that I have a physical copy of, um, which tells you when I bought it and when I did my graduate work and how fast the field is were moving. Uh, and the general idea, and you can go back and read, uh, watch that video if you want the, the detailed details, is that you can imagine language as uh, a multidimensional space, or you can imagine uh, a specific corpus as being represented in a multidimensional space where words are points in that space or vectors in that space, and the more uh, close two words are in that space, in theory, the more closely their meaning is related. So you have this sort of like projection space that's based on co-occurrence, basically. Uh, and there are a lot of ways to do this. So some of the popular methods are fast text, which is a Facebook algorithm, um, word to vec which is a Google algorithm, uh, Glove, which is out of Stanford, um, we talked about universal sentence embeddings, which instead of embeddings individual words, you have uh, a single embedding for each sentence, um, which we're not going to do today, but might be something that we look into in a little bit. Uh, and I had thought that we were going to do fast text, uh, and the the benefits of fast text are that it can handle out of vocabulary words. So I mentioned that embeddings are based on a corpus and the bigger your corpus, generally the more words you will have. Uh, but it's very unlikely that even for a very large corpus, you're going to have all the words you might see later on. Um, there's something called Zipf's law. Uh, oh, let's see if I can spell this. Yeah. Um, where, uh, no, I want the language one. This is just the, the math one. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Does this have the good figure that I am looking for? Uh, yeah, but it's in the log space. Okay, well, that's kind of hard to see. Um, but the general idea with Sif's law is that um, Many words, few words will be very frequent and many words will be very rare. So it's sort of like an exponential decay function. Um, so even if you have a very, very large corpus, you're not going to see all of the rare words because they occur very rarely. So handling out of vocabulary things is a big challenge for uh, embedding. Uh, and Subham says, Zips, thank you. Oh, George says, uh, where is the book? How can I get it? So if you search for speech and language processing, woo -woo -woo -woo, uh, it is available for free online. Uh, and the chapter uh, that we were talking about was, I believe, chapter seven, neural nets and neural language models, where we talk about, um, where they talk about embeddings and training embeddings. Uh, Subham says 20% of words in a vocabulary make 80% of the corpus. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, but the upshot of that is you're going to have words in your testing set that you don't see in your training set. Basically, especially in something like the Kaggle forums where new words are going to get used. So maybe nobody's talked about Quora before, but then we have a Quora competition and suddenly Quora is getting used a lot. Uh, and fast text can handle out of vocabulary words because it works at the morpheme level. Um, so if a word is made up of subwords that you've seen before, you can extrapolate. Um, so if I've never seen the word embiggen before, but I have seen like um, embrace or uh, I think embargo is a different root, but like that em. Uh, prefix and then big and then the en suffix, I could be like, oh, I know about all of these and I can do um, vector math basically to handle the new word. <sighs> um, 
And I was familiar with word to vec, but I was like, oh, you can't fine tune word to vec uh, word vectors, right? Uh, which is what I'd been taught, um, certainly. And I think somebody mentioned in the uh, in the channel chat a while ago when we were talking about word to vec. And as it turns out, that's not right. <laughs> you actually can fine tune word to vec embeddings. Um, so by fine tuning, I mean, we take an already trained model, so we don't have to do all the training because it just, it takes a long time and the, um, the corpus we have isn't that big and embeddings work better the bigger the corpus is. The corpus here being all of the forum posts on Kaggle. Um, but you can actually fine tune word to vec embeddings because there's a new method in, well, I don't know how new it is. There's a method in GenSim that lets you do online learning, um, which was news to me. So I was poking around looking for more information and uh, KF on Kaggle, uh, Mm, uh, so, oh, that must be the first initial. So K Fujikawa, uh, who's a machine learning engineer at Dina, maybe? Oh, only joined 10 months ago and already has a gold. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, in competitions. Uh, talked about, oh, this is the one that uh, he got gold for, or they got gold for. I don't, I don't know if it's a he. Um, talked about fine tuning embeddings. So uh, this is what they had to say. In order to improve the word embeddings, which are frequent in the core data set, but not included in pre-trained vectors like glove and paragram. I'm not familiar with paragram. Uh, I fine tuned the word embeddings on the competition data set uh, with word to vec CBOW. So C usually worries a uh, bag of words, but I don't know what the C would be for. Continuous bag of words. Okay, interesting. Uh, tries to predict the current word. That is what I want. No, I want the continuous one. Not helpful. Uh, word to vec uses either of two model architectures to produce a distributed representation of words, continuous bag of words, or continuous skip gram. In the continuous bag of words architecture, the model predicts the current word from a window of surrounding context words. Uh, the order of the context word does not influence prediction. So this is different from the contextual word embeddings that we've talked about in the reading group, like Elmo or Bert or uh, actually not the one that we are reading right now, XLNet, because order doesn't, no, no, they do include order there, or, or XLNet. Um, in the continuous skip gram architecture, oh, so that's script grams. Um, okay, that makes sense to me. Oh, and a bunch of people are saying continuous in the chat. Uh, Ryan says, continuous bag of words. Also, you can fine tune the embeddings that already exist, but can you add to the vocabulary? Oh, that's a really good point. Um, so what Ryan means by fine tuning existing embeddings is that we have this like multi-dimensional space, we've got all our words, and let's say um, Grover, which is a Sesame Street character, starts being talked about um, in terms of neural network models or specifically um, deep learning models. There's a fake news detection or generated text detection algorithm called Grover. So if we were updating our space, we might have the Grover point moves, you know, away from, you know, Sesame Street and towards natural language processing in this in this space. Um, but adding words and handling out of vocabulary things is a little bit uh, trickier. And the code example that uh, KF uh, provided does look like it adds new words. So we're going to try that out. Uh, and just some more. So this is the code example. I tend to use word vectors obtained by concatenating before and after fine tuning. Um, so this is uh, sort of a common approach uh, to handling uh, fine tuning. So you keep your original word vector and you sort of like train another layer uh, that's your fine tuning. So instead of keeping the same size um, dimension, you add a couple more dimensions that are co occurrence in your specific uh, corpus that you're working on and training with. Um, but it was difficult due to the problem of calculation costs. That makes sense because then you suddenly have a lot more parameters. Um, therefore, I decided to obtain word embeddings from 600 to 400 dimensions randomly for each CV. Okay, interesting. So what I'm getting from there is that they have 
their original embeddings, they have their additional embeddings, and then they're sampling some of the rows from, um, let's call that, that matrix for each word, and that sampling is being done uh, randomly for each fold of cross-validation. The approach was effective not only to reduce computational costs, but also to increase model diversity among CVs, so it contributed to improve the score of the public LB, although the score of local CV has decreased. Interesting. Um, so they're saying that um, this didn't uh, work very well locally with the testing data they had to improve overall performance, but it did improve the score on the public leaderboard, um, which is based on the, um, the data set that you don't have labels for. So here is KF, right? KF's code. Uh, and I'm going to sort of, my plan was to walk through it, and this might be um, a couple weeks project, and then try to apply it to our own, well, the uh, specific uh, data that I am interested in, which is Metacaggle. Uh, in data sets. Oh, I think there's a space between Meta and Kaggle. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so the specific data set that I'm interested in is we have this forum messages table on Metacaggle. Um, and uh, here you can see the post date and you can tell that we have been getting many, many more uh, uh, posts over time. Uh, and Bruce is finally joining live. Welcome, Bruce. Glad you could make it. And we have all of our, oh, let's do this. Uh, will that show me sample posts? I don't think it actually will. Um, but we have these HTMLs of the forum posts. Um, and you can say a lot of forum posts are just like, thanks, thank, thank you. Um, and this is the text that we're going to use to train our word embeddings. Um, and that will be sort of like pre-training. And then I am planning to do clustering based on the embeddings. Um, and for clustering, uh, we looked at hierarchical DB scan and we looked at spectral clustering. So we'll, we'll try both of those and just look, see what works good. Uh, Ryan says, did the Metacaggle data set actually lead you to a full copy of the forum text? I believe it is just the full post. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also, if anyone is ever interested in scraping Kaggle, just don't. <laughs> it's, it's all available. We've done it for you. It's in some nice CSVs and fully documented. Like, you don't, you don't have to do that. No need to make your life harder. Uh, so let's check out this code. So we're importing a bunch of stuff, um, some of which I am not super familiar with. I don't know what this functuals partial is, and I don't know what this multiprocessing pool is, but I have some guesses <laughs> about what that might be. Um, NumPy Pindas, Scikit-Learn, Torch, um, and then GenSim models. Uh, so it is, I believe that the online learning for word to vec is only available in GenSim. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on that, uh, but they're importing the, the model word to vec. Um, so this is a, a pre-trained model. And did I, no, better upvote this very helpful kernel I'm using. That's just polite. Uh, and then library codes. So using Cython, uh, import, C import. Okay, so this must be so that Cython can use it. Um, and this must be a C. Okay, interesting. So this is sort of like, um, I haven't used Cython a whole bunch. I'm a little bit familiar with RCPP, which is the um, R library for uh, basically optimizing code using C++. Um, an interesting thing about R, I know we're not talking about R right now. An interesting thing about R is that you can directly manipulate R objects with C code um, because R is actually C. Okay, so we have a class string replacer um, that has rule keys, values, and then I guess number of rules. Okay, and then we're going to replace uh, each of the keys with the values. Okay, so this is just sort of like a, 
just a, a faster way of replacing specific things that you, you want to. Um, regular expressions replacer. I'm assuming is what reg exp means. I'd probably say R-E-G-E-X rather than R-E-G-E-X-P, but I think it's perfectly reasonable. Um, and it looks like this is just gonna do the same thing as regular expressions, but using C code rather than uh, Python code. So it should be a little bit faster. Uh, and then apply ND array. I don't know what this is doing. Um, processes, apply, array, apply, parallel. Okay, so this might just be parallelizing array operations. Uh, empty range function. Okay, so this is applying a function over, uh, over an array, and it looks like this is just well optimized to be a little bit faster. Um, and then array parallel. Okay, and this is to parallelize that code. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So that's what that pool import from uh, multiprocessing is. Um, although, does this kernel have um, GPU? I guess we could uh, uh, fork it and find out. Yeah, let's uh, let's make a make a copy for us to uh, play around with. All right, I guess I'm entering the uh, Quora competition. It, this is, I believe, it's already closed. Um, so you can enter closed competitions and, of course, make uh, submissions. You do have to continue abiding by the rules, especially around data usage. Uh, let's see. And does it have a no? No GPU. So. Um, that might be something that we could do to even more increase the speed, uh, depending on if that was something we were interested in or not. Um, oh, and you can see I have the dark, uh, the dark mode on. And if you're interested in doing that, uh, it's under file kernel theme. So this is sort of like the, um, the usual light code, which I actually might go with because I think it's a little bit easier to read. Uh, Ryan said, I looked at it a while ago and the text was limited in some way. So this is the form text. Um, it might be, it might be like trimmed if it's too, too, too long. Yeah. Um, if you can remember what that is and let me know, I can, uh, look into it because we want, we want Metacaggle to be as helpful as possible. Uh, and of course you won't see deleted forum posts and you won't see, um, uh, like forum posts on private data sets or something like that. Those are those are not going to be surfaced. Uh, Ryan says, I'm fairly certain you can do this directly in Jimsum without needing to do any C++ or Cython. Uh, I think that sounds correct based on what I know. Uh, but my guess is that the benefit of doing this is a speed up. Hopefully. Otherwise, I'm not entirely sure why you would be doing it. Uh, so these are all of the um, C functions that we just looked at. Uh, and here we have a function uh, load. Uh, so I'm assuming this is Quora insincere questions content, maybe, um, is what that C is for. So we have a training uh, data frame. We have a submission data frame. Uh, we have labels. So this is just sort of um, a custom function to read in the data. And we wouldn't need this because our, our data would be in a different, um, a different format. Uh, and then build data sets. So, okay, I see. So you pass in a bunch of, uh, uh, let's see, what is this? Uh, I think this is a path to the file or the file name. It's a little hard to say. Uh, and then you can specify whether or not you're going to do holdout. Um, you're reading in the database using this uh, this function. No, what function is this? Where's this defined? Hmm. Uh, oh, I see. It's a class. Gotcha. Um, okay, so we're creating an object based on this class QIQC dataset. Gotcha. Uh, Interesting. So this is, this feels very software engineer EE -E to me. This is very object oriented. Um, and, oh, I see, I see. So this is actually doing the uh, tensor 
creation. And this is using PyTorch, which I have never used. <laughs> so we may or may not uh, actually mess with any of this. Because I'm not, I don't think I mentioned this, I'm not planning on doing any deep learning on this uh, particular project. Uh, partially because I don't think I have enough data. Uh, partially because I don't need to argue for compute or I don't want to argue for compute. It just seems like more work. Um, and partially because the single most important thing to me is interpretability. <laughs> Walter says, I love learning things on Friday, unlike the rest of the week. Uh, Welcome. Sorry, Walter is, uh, I'm, I'm going to put you on blast. Walter is inversion, uh, if you guys are familiar. Uh, Ryan says, internet says you can just import the word to vec model and then do the above line of code. Uh, all right. So we are, I do want to read through all of the, nah, maybe I don't. I might just try that and then uh, go back and check this out a little bit later. But this is definitely looks like a, a really interesting kernel, especially if you are working with a really large text data set. Uh, I'm going to start a new kernel. So kaggle.com slash, oh wait, do I have metal, meta kaggle open? I don't. Oh, I do. Excellent. Uh, the easiest way to do this is going to be for me to create a new kernel on meta kaggle. Uh, and I don't think I need GPU. I don't know if I need internet or not. Did you use internet, friend? No, no internet. Okay. Um, uh, and Walter says, hi. So let's get rid of all of this. I'm definitely going to need to import GenSim. Uh, and I'm definitely going to need to import Improt, uh, import, mm, no, 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 there we go, uh, to read in the data, and then I'm going to call this forum posts equals pd, pd dot read underscore csv, I'm pretty sure, yeah. And then my file is in the input directory. Uh, and then it is in, huh, huh, there's a lot of stuff in there that I don't think maybe should be here, maybe. Interesting. Uh, okay, so I think these are all of the, um, uh, I think that's maybe more files than I, I actually need to see. Uh, for messages is the specific thing that we're looking at. So let's load that in. Uh, and then we can actually look at the, is this a Python function? It is not. Uh, let, nope. Oh, I see. Okay, so we have about uh, 490,000. We have roughly uh, 500,000 forum posts. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> There's a strong preference for dark mode, so I am happy to switch. There we go. Um, so we have about 500,000 forum posts, which is not that many. And if we assume each forum post is on average, let's say 50 words, that's, I set myself up to do arithmetic in public. 2.5 million words, very small corpus in NLP. Very, very small corpus. I shouldn't say that. Very small if what you're looking at is neural methods. Uh, let's read everything again real close. Um, excellent. So, oh, dot shape, uh, Payush says. Hey, thank you, very helpful. Um, you can tell that I'm definitely very uh, fluent in Python and it's my primary language. Uh, and let's call this fine tuning word to vec. Right. Oh, the one thing I didn't tell you guys, I didn't show you in this uh, uh, in this kernel is that uh, if we look at the uh, 
Uh, if we look further down here, you can see that there are words that did not exist in the original glove. Um, and I believe it's a little bit confusing because this word to vec model was trained from scratch. This uh, is the base word to vec model, which has been fine tuned. And this is glove, but I don't think we have just the base word to vec model. Um, but the point is that there are words that are not in glove that are in the fine tuned model. Um, so hopefully this will be all of the words that we need. Um, and I'm going to need the original embeddings model. Yes, definitely. Um, let's see, what's in Jemsim? What's in Jemsim models? I'm pretty sure it's just going to be called word to vec. But I want to make sure I have the... Uh, What's the difference? Why is there a doc to vec with D and V lowercase and a doc to vec with D and V uppercase? Hmm. Maybe this is just like, um, okay, there's a lot of these. So this might be, hmm. Okay, so sorry, what I'm thinking about is this might be like a nice, uh, you know, quality of life thing where, uh, it's just in case you make a capitalization error, or there might be big semantic differences between the capitalization here. So, what did you use, my friend? Ooh. Word to vet capitalized. So let's do that. Uh, from jensen.models import word to vec. Actually, Stop running. Uh, I want this to be forum posts. I think that's a better variable name. Uh, Ryan says, a lot of stuff in there has been kept after being deprecated. They redid their API and didn't want to break people's stuff. Oh, that's uh, genuinely nice of them. And I believe there's a commercial license you can get for GenSim as well. I know you can like hire the Jensen author as a consultant, and that's like one of the ways that um, he funds the project. Oh, okay. So uh, I'm now going to copy and paste uh, Ryan's code from the chat. There we go. Which I am gonna guess is. Not quite right. Okay. Um, okay, so this assumes that we, mm, this is a little bit hard to read, huh? Uh, so this assumes that we have a uh, item called model, which we don't yet. Um, I guess we could call it model. Let me let me check this out. Jensen online learning word to vec. All right, usage examples. Uh, model word to vec, common text. Okay. Um, Oh, so the window is that when we were talking about the continuous bag of words, that must be how many words you're looking at. Uh, the thing is streamed, meaning sentences can be a generator reading input data from disk on the fly without loading the entire corpus into RAM. Too late, we already loaded it into RAM. <laughs> it's not that big a corpus, again. Uh, so I think that's fine. Uh, and... Carmian Garwal says, I think keyed vectors, uh, no, never mind, you don't need, you do need the um, word to vec class. Okay, that's helpful. Uh, okay, I see. So it looks like in the docs, um, you can just load a model, but this looks like a pre trained model that is called word to vec dot model. The reason for separating the trained vectors into keyed vectors is that if you don't need the full model state anymore, the state can be discarded. 
Mm, okay. That's helpful. Okay, I see. So it looks like common texts, brown corpus, line sentence. So I'm looking for an already pre-trained model in here, and we may need to end up downloading it. Um, Ryan says, that's if you want to train it from scratch. You can also strain, start from pre-trained word to vec embeddings and have the advantage of the huge corp rather trained on. Yeah, that is what I would like. And I am hoping to find the code to get the pre-trained model. Let's see. Hmm. All right, trained keyword vectors. You can perform using the trained model. Some of them are already built in. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. Um, since trained word models are independent from the way they're trained, they can be re represented in a standalone structure as implemented in this module. Um, how to obtain word vectors. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, now here's the training. That wasn't super helpful. Uh, Jen, uh, Ryan says, gonna have to add the data set from Kaggle data sets. Gen Sim doesn't come with it. Um, okay, and here's the thing where you can't retrain uh, keyed vectors. Hmm. Okay, so let's see how uh, KD did it. KL, KH, KF. <laughs> My apologies. Um, I'm just constantly struggling with uh, words and letters and that's just my... Uh... Okay, so this is training from scratch, which is not what we want. Uh, this is model build, model train, model build, vectors, trainables. Okay, and that took about, both of these take about six minutes. And this is using word vectors and context vectors. Mm, okay. What's going on here? Let's read through it. So our model is a word to vec model, star star params. I don't know what star star means. Um, Anurang says you can use the GenSim API to get pre-trained word to vec models on different data sets. Helpful, thank you. Okay, so what are we doing here? Uh, we are building a vocabulary from frequency, given our word frequency. We're doing IDX map. Okay, so we're creating an array from vocab token to ID W for W in model dot WV dot index to entity. Okay, so I think we're figuring out the indexes of all of our vocabulary words that are in our given vocabulary. And then we're creating vectors using glove. So this isn't actually, okay, okay, okay. So this is using glove, not word to vec. Okay. Uh, and then, oh, okay, we're doing a lot of things to this model that I don't uh, really follow. Uh, karma, I believe you said to call you karma earlier, so I'm gonna do that, uh, said star star params means you can explode a dict into key value argument pairs. Okay, so you're sort of getting all the uh, permutations of keys and values. Um, and Ryan says star star param is an unloading an entire Python dictionary as a bunch of keyword arguments into the word to vec function. Okay, interesting. Dictionary keyword arguments. 
So is the dictionary called params? Yeah, okay, I see, I see, I see. So this is just an easy way for them to um, specify their hyperparameters and then like go through and uh, futz with them later on. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, and Jay Wood says, uh, I think it expands out the keyword parameters. I'd have to look it up. Uh, yeah, I think there's enough consensus that I believe that that is also what's going on. A little bit of tea. Okay. I mean, I guess we could just try to do the um, word to vec from scratch on our on our data set and see what happens but I would prefer to use the pre-trained ones and fine tune them given, given my choice, because that's gonna be trained on a much bigger corpus. So you're gonna have overall better results. Uh, so, Jen Sift. Hey, somebody knows what I like. Okay, uh, or what I need. There we go. Okay, so Jen Sim Downloaders API. Um, glove Twitter, text eight, is there a list of models? Mm. Oh, I see, I see, I see. But okay, but this is training word to vec on an existing data set and that's not what I'm interested in. So I think this should work, but I need to know the specific name of the data set that I'm interested in. So that's also not what I wanted. Um, where can I find a list of the trained models in GenSim? And also I'm definitely gonna need to turn on internet for this. Uh, And Karma says, an alternative is to use fast text embeddings. The fast text repo has a C script that lets you fine tune super easily. Cool. Um, the downside of that is that I do want to do this in kernels and we don't support C unless it's like through Cython or RCPP or something. Um, but that does sound like a good viable alternative. Uh, GenSim API model names. Just want a list of the models. API reference, that sounds good. Um, da, da, da. Word to vec embeddings. Uh, Word to vec dot model. I think Nope, nope, this is the thing that we were looking at previously and it's still not the answer to what I want. I want the name of the model in the API. Downloader. Uh, downloader API, yes, yes, good. See the repo for more information. What is GenSim data for? I don't want the data set. I want, yes, here we go. Finally, I want the model. Oh, um, okay, so we got Glove Twitter. We got Glove Twitter. Uh, we've got Glove Wiki GigaWord, and we have Word to Vec Google News 300. I think that's what I want. This one will be in Russian. I am interested in English. Um, so one downside of this over the previous method is this is not gonna high handle multilingual data, um, but Maybe it works better. And if uh, we do want to handle multilingual data, we could train multilingual embeddings, which is hard, but I think we'll uh, figure it out when it comes to that. So this should be, oh yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a chunky one. Um, it's downloading the word to vec model. Um, Ryan says, I would just start your model from scratch and I wouldn't use the downloader because it's already available as a Kaggle data set just to see what happens. Uh, and Karma says, subprocess.call. This is the same page that we were on. Jensen doesn't have a ton of documentation. Yeah, uh, as discovered. I'm, I'm catching up with the chat while well, this, this happens. So uh, these were more relevant when people said them. Mm -hmm. Can I make you go away? Shoot. 
Is it too busy thinking about the download? Okay. Oh, and uh, Anurang says, uh, API.info returns all models list. Thank you. That uh, is very helpful. Meanwhile, let's... Um, check out the existing data sets instead of doing that. Uh, so what data is this using? Mm, okay, so I think this is actually using the same uh, method that we were to download from the API, unfortunately. Oh, interesting, this is using Spacey rather than Gensim. It says Gensim, maybe it's using both. Reading them in, cleaning, not what I'm interested in, bigrams, not what I'm interested in, uh, most frequent words, training, word to that. Okay, so this is being trained from, uh, from scratch. Oop. Hmm, all right, let's just refresh real quick. Uh, <laughs> oh, I do not read Cyrillic, but MK says refill the tea while this monster is downloading. Uh, I would, but I'd have to reboil it, and then you'd all have to hear the, the kettle screaming, which I think would be not uh, super pleasant to the ears. Uh, Jay Wood says, looks like the download freezes the UI thread. Yeah, so that's not super ideal. Uh, Ryan says, you're going to need something to tokenize the sentences. Let's just, just exit the page. Um, and also maybe try and find a uh, word to vec that is already on Kaggle that I don't have to download because that seems like not the best use of time slash data. Okay. Uh, Word to vec sample pre-trained Google. Um, so looking at the uh, data quality measures here, it looks like this one is probably the highest. Um, I know the NLTK data sample is going to be a little bit um, smaller. Um, this one is in Python. No description specified. One file. Uh, Wikipedia word to vec, glove to word to vec. Uh, let's see. Let's take a quick look at this. One file, not as big. Um, lots of people are mentioning that Jensen has a uh, tokenizer. And that sentence piece is state of the art for Bert. It doesn't work for word to vec, though. Yeah, I believe so. Bert, I believe, uh, does do um, subword stuff, and word to vec does not. Man, there's a lot of people who have uploaded very similar word to vec models. Uh, fast text word to vec, slow word to vec utils. All right. Let's see what's in here. Um, so it looks like a binary glove, glove, pre trained word to vec, including glove and Google News. Um, uh, and Anurang says, Anurag says uh, that you can use the Unigram tokenizer from sentence piece for word to vec input. So that's good to know. There's the binary. That one's two gigs. This one's two gigs. I'm guessing that these two are the same. Um, is this really in the public domain? Well, uh, I guess they both have those licenses, so guess it is. Uh, so let's add word to vet Google and see if that helps, if we can use that. Um, there we go. <laughs> Oh, 
I'm just going to relaunch real quickly. All right. Uh, okay. Vectors equals. Actually, what was that? Was that a binary? Um, how do I? Oh, right. Since I've added another data set, I need to specify that it is in Metacaggle specifically. Uh, so I think this is a, what type of file is this? I think it's a binary. I don't know how to read that into Python. Um, hmm. Maybe we can read it as a uh, using the the gem sim method. I don't think that's going to work though. So the reason why I don't think it's going to work is because I think that gem sim is looking for something specific for their keyed value um, pre-trained word embeddings, and I don't know that it's going to work well. Um, but it might. Let's see. Let's go back to that page that was not very helpful before, but might be more helpful now. All right, uh, so let's let's try word to vec load and then give it the binary. I, again, I think this is not going to work, um, but it might. All right, go away. Word to vec load. And then it is in input, and it is in input u. That's not a word. Uh, we're to vet Google, and then it is in Google News Vectors. Mm -hmm. Unpickling error. OK, so it's expecting a pickle and not a binary. Um, yeah, and I think it is going to look for something in its specific uh, format. But it did look like uh, there was this word to vec format option, so that might work. Um, let's also call this a model. Deprecation warning. Uh, deprecated. Use ginsim.models.keyedvectors.loadWord2Vec uh, format instead. That is not going to work because we do not have a keyed vector. We just have the basic Word2Vec model. Um, well, uh, Anurag says it might. So let's try it. Copy and we yeah we just did base Jensen so let's try it it might work mm, okay that didn't work either uh, UTF eight codec can't decode by zero nine four in position seven invalid start byte <sighs> all right um, so it's a binary file, and it looks like it might be in sort of a weird encoding, which is not ideal for me. Uh, mm, where are you from, Shanth? Tamil Nadu. So, oh, uh, a little hard to say what the encoding might be. Uh... Ryan says, the Stack Overflow page I posted before has full directions to load in the vocabulary, combine new vocabulary, and then train. Those are the keyed vectors. This isn't the model. Yeah, it is not. But I was hoping that it might just load in default word to vec to be nice. Also, I don't think I saw the link. I'm going to go have to go through and approve that by hand later. Uh, in the meantime, I guess I will Google it. <laughs> Uh, let's see, word to vec, uh, gensim, online learning maybe? And then you said it was stack overflow. Gensim word to vec online training, uh, Path sample CSV. Is this the one you were talking about, maybe? Um, so this is Gensim. There's a CSV. Make trans. 
None for key and string punctuation. I don't know what that's doing. Um, oh, uh, how to initialize new word to vect model with pre-trained model weights is the title. Hey, that is what I'm looking for. Excellent. Um, so using the GenSim library in Python for using and training a word to vec model. Um, I want to initialize the weights of my model with a pre-trained model weight and then uh, update it. Oh, that's extremely easy. I don't know what an EMB is, though. You can now do incremental training with GenSim. I would recommend doing loading the pre-trained model and then doing an update. Um, which I think seems extremely reasonable. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like the word to vec load is not going to work for us because the pre-trained model that I added in here is going to be a little bit different. So this is absolutely not going to work. Yeah, because uh, I j gave it a file that doesn't exist. Uh, if I give it a file that does exist, I think it's also not going to work because I think it's looking for a pickle of the specific keyed value file type. I don't think it'll just take a raw um, CSV sort of thing. Also, I believe I failed to post over it. I did. Boop. Let's make my coding space bigger so I'm not guessing what's off the edge of the screen. Unpacking error, it's not a pickle. Um, doop, 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 doop. <laughs> Ryan says, that's somehow a different page. It's the same question. Um, I would just answer Google the question. Uh, it has a lot of upvotes. Mm, this one? This is exactly the same question, but it has different answers. And it must be because it's on data science than gen rather than general stack overflow would be my guess. Um, okay, so mm, this is training from scratch though. Okay, here we are importing. Oh, interesting, interesting, interesting. So keyed vectors dot word, da, 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 da. let's try this. This might work. It might be looking specifically for uh, the Jensen ones. Why? I feel like I'm not able to post good. Delete, paste. Let's try this. Uh, and I'm not going to have binary being false because it is, as they say, a binary file. I think this is what we just tried though, and I don't think it's gonna work. It did not work. Okay, oh, that's right. I do need to uh, define keyed vectors. Pretty sure this is what we just tried though. Let's see. Yeah, we're getting uh, that same UTF uh, error. Um, and set binary to be true. Okay, so it looks like this is actually working. So I think the thing, okay, so because they said binary equals false in this example, I think I assumed that you would only specify if it was not the default. And so I guess binary equals false was the default and they just specified it in that um, specific example to be especially Pythonic and explicit. Eh. 
All right, are we going to crash uh, our kernel again? It does seem like a distinct possibility. It's running. I'm gonna put this up near the top in its own cell though, because I think it works. Like it's not not working, so that's good. Uh, get rid of this. Okay, so then the thing that we would want to do once we have our model loaded in, and we can get rid of all of this because that's not what we're looking for, um, is build a new model, uh, sorry, build vocabulary with new sentences and then train our existing model with the new sentences. Um, and to, am I gonna sneeze? <laughs> yes, excuse me. <laughs> uh, to do, I don't know why I copied and pasted when I could have just moved the cell. Um, and to do that, we're going to need to read in our corpus as sentences. Um, all right, this is uh, this is very encouraging. The uh, cell has run all of the way, so that's good. Uh, and then if they were, da, 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 da. so you're here. So sentences, it looks like is why is this so hard to read? I think it's because I'm zoomed out a little bit. Sorry, I know this is going to be very small, but I will read it for you guys. Uh, so loading in the pre-trained ones. Dot train. Sentences. Total examples. Okay. Um, so the next thing that we would need to do is we're going to need to convert our forum post into this format. And fortunately, I think we actually already did that. Um, so let me check out my kernels real quick because I'm pretty sure we have an existing uh, pipeline that does that for us. Extracting, tokenizing after yake. Uh, doop, doop. Yake keywords, tokenizing, get clusters. <laughs> Sun's output. Okay, so it's not in this one, I don't think. Um, was it in Yake example? I think it was. Loop through forum posts and extract keywords. That's not it. Uh, oh, I think it was would have been the first time we did brown clustering was where we had that. Um, sorry, I just don't want to rewrite the same code over again, so. Okay, so we are taking the first 100 forum posts and we are tokenizing them. And I think that's actually all we need to do. And I think this is actually the NLTK tokenizer, but I don't know if it's gonna matter very much. Um, yeah, it is. So let's try, actually we want, uh, we should probably start with like a little po little bit of it. So let's actually take this whole thing uh, and then import the NLTK tokenizer we need. And then we should get the data in the right format out because I already wrote that code and apparently I didn't comment it very well. So I'm not entirely sure uh, which part does what. Nope, not what I wanted. Uh, I just want the NLTK one. So this is a regular expression tokenizer based on, I believe, white space. So this would not work for languages like Thai or Mandarin, or any of those. All right. Uh, and then if we look at sample data tokenize, head. Uh, oh, that's right, It's uh, that's not gonna work because it is not a data frame, it is an array. So let's look at the first five. Yeah, excellent, that is exactly what we are looking for. Um, 
format wise. So now we should be able to um, plug that in here and here and train our model. Did not work. <laughs> uh, Word to vector keyed vectors object has no attribute build vocab. Okay, uh, so it is past 10 o'clock and uh, I think we are at a good stopping place now. I've got some um, new errors, which is already exciting. So I'm gonna leave myself a little note to do. Mm, figure out how to update the loaded word vectors. All right, so we spent an hour figuring out how to get the word vectors into the uh, kernel, which I think is, you know, pretty reasonable. Um, and then hopefully we should be able to start updating them um, and getting sort of more, get rid of this, uh, you know, uh, customized word vectors for our specific vocabulary going forward. <sighs> yeah, this was good and a little bit frustrating, I think is how I would uh, how I would describe today. I'm not entirely sure what we did wrong. Mm, it might be that you can't. Hmm. Okay, so it might be that the model that we've read in here, which is a pre-trained model and the model that they're referring to here are actually pretty different. Um, list model vocab keys update equals true. Interesting. Um, so I'm going to copy and paste my, uh, uh, so question with more info. Uh, copy and paste the uh, Stack Overflow post that we've been looking at in here, just so we can go back and check it out when we get started next week. All right, uh, and I'll commit this and make it public uh, so that you guys can check it out if you would like. Uh, I mean, I don't think it's the world's most exciting code, uh, but it's working more or less so far, so that's nice. Uh, and we'll continue, oops, uh, we'll continue working on it in the weeks to come. Um, no reading club next week because we're gonna be doing the SQL um, summer camp. And if you are interested in learning more about SQL, you can feel free to sign up. Um, we are going to be talking about um, various ways to, so the first part we, we did like the select with uh, sort of from, uh, group by part of SQL, and the next part we're going to go all the way up through joining. Um, so we're going to talk about different types of joins, which if you've worked much with SQL is very important. Um, so you are perfectly welcome to join for that, and that will be um, at the same time as the Kaggle Reading Club on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but Friday we're back to live coding. So I will uh, see you then. Oh, and some people are uh, going to check it out. <laughs> so I'm I'm very thankful for any feedback you have. Um, we understand you're an R person. I mean, I like R. I also use Python. Uh, but yeah, I definitely I'm definitely more fluent in R than Python. So, all right. Have a good weekend, everybody, and I will talk to you next week. Bye.